Citation. MLA, APA, Chicago. That's what we're talking about today. Uh, we're gonna go over that why first, and then we're gonna go over the what and how. Um, I've allowed myself four tangents in this video, so sorry about that. So the best thing I think that we could do to start to learn about citation is to observe them in the wild. The first place we're gonna look for citations is in a place where you may or may not be aware that they're even using them, is Wikipedia. We're gonna look at the Gangnam Style article because I think it's a good song. If you're looking at Wikipedia, their citation style goes like this. You're reading along and then we get on the 21st of December 2012, Gangnam Style became the first YouTube video to reach 1 billion views, right? It was a big deal. Um, so then that gives us a six in parentheses. If I hover over the six, it gives us three pieces of information, an author's name, a title, and then publication information, the when and where it was published. So guy's name, I can click on that and that takes me out to the article. I won't go to that. But so I'm reading along and then I read, see the six, and then if I click on this six, what this does is it takes me down to the bottom of the page where I can find that same information, author, title, publication information. I can do that for all of the citations. And as you can see, there's a lot of citations for the Gangnam Style article. Okay, tangent number one. Uh, in your mind right now, think how many references are there for the Gangnam Style article? Just come up with a number right now. Okay. Here is the actual number. Okay, now, based on that, come up with the actual number of references in the article for Jesus Christ. Okay, think about that. Okay, here's the number. There are more references for the Gangnam Style article than there are for the Jesus Christ article. All right, so the second place we're going to look is in journalism. So we're going to look at Seventeen Magazine, this breaking news that Millie Bobby Brown just wore the viral Nike Air Force One sneakers the entire internet is after. I bet you didn't even know that. But, so we've got a person's name, Kelsey. Now, they do citation here, it just isn't the same. They're not going to have a works cited page down at the bottom. But what they do have is, whenever they're using a source, they either put the source, so here is Millie Bobby Brown's own Instagram feed where she's wearing the Air Force One shadows, which are pretty cool actually. Or... Uh, if they make a reference to something, what a visco girl is, then they give a, uh, a link to another article. In this case, you can see down here at the bottom that it's just their own article about this. Same thing about uh, Stranger Things. Um, when they make reference to Nike, they give you a, web uh, a link that goes to directly to Nike's website. So that's still citation. Um, they're saying, here's a source. If you want more information about that source, uh, they link to it. Or they say uh, the words like according to. This was a really dumb example to use. I'm sorry. But in journalism, what they're doing is um, they give. It's called in the prose. Uh, I'm going to make that important. In the prose. So in journalism, there's no end references. There's only in-text citations or where they do it in the pros. Okay, third place we're going to look is the very most cited article ever. Most scientific articles get, if they're really great, get, you know, above 300. 89, most are much less than that. This article from 1951 has been cited 218,434 times, and it is a banger. Check this out. Protein measurement with the folene phenol reagent. So if your measure of uh, the importance of an article is the number of time it's been cited, this is the most important article in the history of science, I guess. The crazy thing about this, this was published in 1951. This uses the same citation style as Wikipedia. I'm reading along. It says, since 1922, when Wu proposed the use of folene phenol reagent for the measurement of proteins, it gives me a one, which sends me down to the bottom of the document, and I find... One, Wu H. from the journal Biological Chemistry, 1922. Wikipedia and this journal from 1951 use the exact same citation style. The last place we're going to look is an informal citation style. So I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this, but this is a great YouTube video from 2014. What this guy, his name is Kutiman. He's from Jerusalem. What he would do is download songs from the internet and cut them together. I love this song so much. 
So these people don't even know that they're in music videos together. He just downloaded their content, edited them together to make this new band, this new song. The crazy thing is, what he did, he has a citation style. It's just very informal. So every single video he used, you can go in and click. So I want to find just the drum beat video. So here's this guy. And that's the original video. So that is a citation style um, based on, you know, what we know about citations. Tangent number two, uh, the girl who sang in this video, uh, she goes by Princess Shaw. Actually, they made a documentary about her life and how she got this kind of like weird version of internet famous uh, from the video. And uh, it's a pretty good documentary. You should check it out. But I know what you're thinking now. Usually when we talk about citation, like I said at the beginning, we talk about MLA, APA, Chicago. So what are all those and where do they come from? Well, I think the best analogy to give is that in the United States, our plugs for the wall look like this. In France and Germany, they look like this. And the thing is, is like, uh, if you travel to any other country, uh, and you take your uh, American appliances with you and you want to use them, you've got to get some sort of kit that adapts it, right? So here's what happened with the history of electricity. We had to get that electricity from the wall into the appliance. And about the late eight, eight, 18, you know, 1800s, they had to, you know, they started like figuring it out all over the whole world. And so in England, they had their thing. In Germany, they had their thing. In the United States, we had our thing, right? And so... We uh, developed all these things in different rooms at, at the same time without really coordinating with each other. So these plugs do all the same job, but they just happened to have been created in different places. Same thing with MLA and APA. So in MLA, there's this group of people named the Modern Language Association, and um, they decided, well, we're going to be publishing this journal, and so we need to have people know where to find the, you know, the sources. Um, we want it to look a certain way. We think the name of the author is the most important thing. We want them to know the difference between a year and a page number. And so they just made their rules to make it look a certain way so that they could publish it and they could all be, you know, have this, like, consistency throughout all their journals. Thing is, APA the American Psychological Association, they did the same thing at the same time. And for them, the year that the thing was published was more important. For Chicago, um, they didn't want to flip all the way to the end of the work. And they just wanted it to be a footnote at the bottom of that page. So they created their system. The, there, the little differences there are between them are just because there's differences, the same way there's differences between the plug in Germany and the plug in the United States. That's the difference between MLA and APA. They came up with them in different rooms at around the same time without coordinating with each other. Tangent number three. Uh, in 1915, in England, when they finally decided, okay, we need to standardize the plug, there were 73 different plugs that were already being used on different appliances, including this one that looks like the end of a light bulb. Can you imagine having to screw in an appliance and screw it out every single time you used it? Okay, so now the why of why do we cite sources. You've most likely heard that the reason we cite sources is to give credit to the authors and to uh, not be doing plagiarism, right? Which is fine, sure, good, but they're a little bit self-serving, and um, if, if that's your only view of citation, is just so you don't get in trouble, you've only got half the picture. So there's two more things that I think are really important in considering it. The first is that you're, it, by, by writing in an academic context, you're participating in a conversation, and the people who read your writing, they may want to learn more, they want to check your sources, they may want to, um, you know, do extra work based on your work. And so you need to give them three pieces of information as easily as possible for them to find the work that you're, that you're quoting from or that you're citing, right? So those pieces of information are the author's name, the title of the work, and the publication information, which is when and by whom and where it was published. Um, if a person has those three things, they can 
find your work that you're giving them. And so the entire purpose of citation is that somebody's reading along in your paper, they see something, they see a piece of information and think, hmm, I, you know, either I don't trust this person, I want to know what they're doing, or this looks really interesting, I want to learn more. So they flip to the back with MLA and APA, they flip to the back and they say, okay, author, title, and then they can go look it up in a database, they can go to their library, they can find it, whatever, right? So by citing your sources, you're participating in this academic conversation and showing people, hey, there's all this good information out there, I used it for this, you could use it for whatever, right? So that's another really important thing. And then the other one that I don't think anybody ever talks about is the idea that like citing sources correctly, uh, you know, is um, <clears throat> a way of saying, look, I'm a member of this club called the College Educated Persons Club. Um, I belong here because look, I can put a comma behind my title instead of a period. I don't, I don't even know if that's right. It, by being able to correctly put your citations in this thing, there are people who will, they're looking for these marks of whether or not you belong to the club and being able to properly cite MLA means, okay, you've passed the test, you belong to this club, or you don't, obviously. You're not a college educated person. Look where you put your semicolon in that citation or something like that, right? So there are people who want to keep the gates of this college educated persons club and uh, being able to correctly do MLA and APA is part of your uh, initiation into that club. Okay, now let's get into the how of citation. So when we're thinking about citations, there's really two major categories of thing that we need to be thinking about. In-text citation and end references. All right, so let's start with end references. Okay, what a lot of students default to is to just copy the URL and put it at the end of the paper. There are three reasons why this doesn't work. The first is links break after time. They're not stable. They're not going to last forever. If, you're, if you've got the name of a website and that you check that a year later, it's probably not going to be there because people update their websites. The other thing is, your paper is most likely not going to be only in digital format where somebody can hover over, a, hover over a mouse and click. It's the silliest thing in the world to see a piece of paper with a, a hyperlink in it because it doesn't do anything. It's not connected to the internet. The third thing is, if I've got a paper and I'm looking at it and I have to type in that URL letter for letter in order to figure it out, sometimes it's really hard. It makes it difficult for your reader to uh, to get to that website. www.creedthoughts.gov.www backslash creedthoughts. Check it out. All right, so let's start with end references. Um, you've seen them. They look like this. What I'd like to do is think of them as little paragraphs that contain three sentences that give you all th those three vital pieces of information you need in order to find uh, a work. So they're little paragraphs that contain those three sentences. All right, so let's get into the how of how to make a citation. So there's an easy way and a hard way, and I'm putting them both in quotation marks because to me the easy way is harder and the hard way is the easier way. So um, let's say, for example, I'm citing this YouTube video from Kutaman to give it up, right? So I can go to EasyBib and they have a system that does citations. Um, an online video, what I can do is grab the URL and put it in. It's gonna try to figure it out. Couldn't find it. Okay, so yeah, if you try to type in EasyBib, it may work, it may not work. The other thing about it is it's, uh, you know, it's just a, a, a computer bot that's filling in boxes for you. It doesn't know if it's doing it the right way or not. Oh, what's the other one? Citation Machine. That's the one you guys use. More, I think. I think it's the same. I don't know. See, look. Is, this seems like it's the easy way to have a machine do it for you, but here's the better way to do it. So always just go in and write MLA citation and then whatever it is. If it's a journal article, if it's a newspaper article, if it's a book, if it's whatever. So I'm going to say YouTube video. So now the thing that you're looking for is called a template. So I'm just going to click on this first one. I don't know. I've never been to Utica. So YouTube video. Here's what it tells me I need to do. So this is what you're looking for. A template. Last name, first name of the creator, title. So again, author, title, publication information. So now what do I do, what I do is 
I can just grab this example. I can go over to my paper and just put it in, right? Notice that it's got this gray behind it. That's like the first signal that you've uh, done this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at my actual source. What is the author? Author's name is Kuti Man. And you know what? It's not capitalized, so I'm going to not capitalize it. Um, okay. Now, here's the title of the video. I'm just going to copy and paste it in right here. So the cool thing about this is a lot of the uh, nuts and bolts of citing things has to do with where these periods are and what's italicized and what's not italicized. Uh, see, that's what happens when you copy and paste, but we'll fix that in a second. Then the word YouTube. Um, I don't know what this is. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And then a comma and then the date it was published. So I'm just going to grab that. September 12, 2014. Oh, but it wants it in this way. So 12 Sep 2014. And then it wants the URL. So I'll grab that. I'm going to put it here. And uh, I'm going to remove the link. And it just wants this part of it. So there we go. Now what I'm going to do is highlight it. I want to make it all the same font. I think this is in Times New Roman. Same size, 11. Bold and unbold. Okay. I know this is super bored. I know it. But at the same time, I just made my citation. I know it's correct. I followed a template. This to me is the easy way of making one. You find a template. Oh, I got to make it. Uh, well, everything looks exactly how it's supposed to look. because I made it myself. I think this is the easy way. So if you're gonna rely on a website to do it for you, it's probably gonna be wrong. And sometimes they make it easier, but a lot of times they don't. So now let's get into in-text citations. So in this club that you're gonna to belong to or that you already belong to called College, Ed College Education, Ked College Educated Persons Club. Um, we uh, who have graduated from that club have a very specific way of reading everything we read. And that is at every single moment where when we're reading, we're asking ourselves, where does this information come from at every step of the way? So it is your job as a writer in the member of this College Educated Persons Club to always be answering that question as clearly and as soon as possible. So let's go read something that I wrote to see how I handled that. So here's a paper that I wrote about mashed potatoes one time. Okay, so the, the reason we're looking at this is to think, how is an academic person gonna be reading this and what role do, do in-text citations play in helping in that, right? So as an academic reader, I'm always asking myself, where does this information come from? So first thing I see, mashed potatoes research. So the diner's dictionary, Ato, tells us that the first written down and published recipe of mashed potatoes as we know them today is from 1747 in a book called this. Okay, so where does that information come from? You should pretty much know it comes from the diner's dictionary and you should know that Ato, what that does is it sends me down to the bottom of the page and I can find Ato. I can find a name, a title, and a publication information for the diner's dictionary. Right, so that's the purpose of that uh, uh, in-text citation is to answer the question of where where did I learn that the first recipe is from 1747 and it came from this book? I learned it from the Diner's Dictionary, Ato. Right. So the next thing, um, so I make that claim and then I say, although I have a hard time believing that people weren't peeling, cutting, boiling, and mashing potatoes a long time before that. So where does this information come from? I labeled it very clearly. I said the word I. I'm the one that came up with the speculation that mashed potatoes existed before the recipe of mashed potatoes existed. So I don't know, argue with me or not, but that's where that information comes from. Then the next claim that I make is that the main ingredients, potatoes, milk, and butter, make sense together and, according to Michael Pollan of his book, Botany of Desire, contain all the vitamins necessary to sustain healthy human life. Okay, so now I've made a claim, or I, 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 I quote somebody who says that mashed potatoes contain all the vitamins necessary to sustain healthy human life. Who was that person? You know exactly who it was, because I said, Michael Pollan, where in his book, Botany of Desire, and then this 200 right here is the page number where you can go and actually find that. Um, 
I gave the name, the title, and then if they want the publication information, they got to go down to the bottom and they got to find pollen. Michael, Botany Desire, it was from Random House from 2008. If they want that information, they know exactly where to go and how to get it. That's the purpose of in-text citations, so that if, at every moment you're answering the question, where does this information come from? And you're making it as fast as possible for somebody to jump down to the bottom and find your end references to uh, go find that source if they want. Also, pay attention to the reason why we have work cited in alphabetical order with this hanging indent is to make it as easy as possible to find things. See how fast it took me, or how little time it took me to find uh, pollen here, right? Because I just knew, well, here's J, here's S, so it's right here, and his last name sticks out. If I want to find, so I have this photograph from Darren Clark. If I want the information from that, then I can find Clark very easily. It takes me milliseconds to find it. If this weren't in a hanging indent, if everything were uh, left justified, it would be harder to find, even if it is alphabetical order. So. That's the purpose of in-text citation. Now, an important thing to realize is, here, here's a good example. I said, according to Michael Pollan in his book, Botany of Desire, uh, contains all the vitamins necessary. And then I only have the page number. It would also be correct to just have this because I mentioned Michael Pollan. They can find it later. Now, later on, I said, by the 1700s, uh, they, potatoes, came to America where they were essential in the fight against scurvy. And now I have pollen in parentheses. Whereas before, I didn't have pollen in parentheses because in my prose, in the prose, I mentioned pollen here. In the prose, I didn't mention pollen. So therefore, I have to put it in the parentheses because that's how I answer the question, where does this information come from? Now, uh, there are differences in how MLA APA Chicago handle those things. In MLA, the main thing we care about is the author's name. So in APA, it's a little bit different. Uh, they care more about the year. Of it. So here's some examples of what APA would look like. All of these in-text citations in APA are correct. In Nicholas Carr's article, is Google making us stupid? And then I have the year 2008 in parentheses um, because this is APA, so the thing they care about is the year. Whereas in MLA, in Nicholas, in Nicholas Carr's article, is Google making us stupid? He argues that our use of search engines makes us less human. That's fine. I've mentioned the author's name, and so I don't need to do any parenthetical citation because... I've covered everything we care about in MLA. Same thing in APA, if I say the 2008 article, is Google making us stupid, claims that our use of search engine makes us human, then I have to put the author's name in parentheses because I didn't mention it in the prose. In MLA, 2008 article, is Google making us stupid? It looks the exact same. So I've seen a lot of students think that no matter what, you always have to give the name in parentheses, and that's the easiest first thing to make yourself look like a noob. If you say, uh, Dr. Pearson argues that bananas are the best fruit in the whole world, and then you have Pearson in parentheses, you look like a noob. You don't have to do that. Um, the reader has enough brain power to understand that since you said Pearson, you're citing the source of Pearson, and they know enough to go back to the back of your paper, find Pearson, find the title and the publication information, and do more work to figure that out if they want to. All right, so that's citation. The main thing is to keep in mind, if you don't remember anything else from this video is, remember, go find your template, build your, <clears throat> build your citation, your EndWorks references from scratch because it's easier and it's better and it's faster at the end of the day. And then for your in-text citation, anything that you don't mention that are those three vital pieces of information, author's name, title, uh, year, put them in your prose or put them in the in-text citation depending on which style you're using, either author's name or the year. Um, and then the page number if you're giving a direct quote, and that's it, really. Everything else is just kind of details that you can figure out later when you need to figure them out. Um, okay, hopefully that was helpful. Good luck. Remember all of this for the rest of your lives and never forget it. Be good people. See ya.